um, so you know a little bit about us. Uh, my name is Nathan, um, and I will be your TCI guide for the day. Um, I taught for 10 years, and now I work on the curriculum development side. Um, so this is my delightful picture over here. Um, and so kind of help with our science teachers and our social studies teachers and kind of helping everybody create fun investigations and activities for um, our science teachers um, in class. And Kelsey, can you introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks Nathan. Uh, my name is Kelsey Moore and I uh, taught for eight years and have been with TCI for the last several years. And I, as a teacher, as a classroom teacher, TCI was something that uh, really dynamically changed the way that I taught. And so I'm just really glad to be able to be here today and share uh, just how much TCI has impacted my life, but be able to share those resources with you. So I'm glad to be here with you today. Cool. All right. Um, so let me show results of the poll. We've actually got a pretty even split um, of lower and upper elementary. Um, so we are thankfully going to hit something right in the middle. So we picked third grade just because this is what we were kind of expecting would happen, um, is that we'd have a mix. Um, the most important thing that we do want to make sure that we share is that no matter what we show you today, um, it doesn't matter the grade level that we're showing, it will apply both to lower elementary and to upper elementary. Um, and really most of it applies across TCI programs, um, but there are some specific things to, to K-5 science. Um, but no matter what grade, kindergarten or fifth grade, you should be good with the different things that we're showing you online um, in whatever grade level we're showing you. Okay. Um, so what we'd like to do first is just a quick kind of housekeeping issues, um, just in case you haven't used Zoom or I mean, we're not necessarily, we're all kind of transferring to this virtual world now. Um, so there are kind of two elements of the Zoom that we like to use in the webinar. Um, the first one is the chat. So if you can search for that on your bar, it should probably be in the black bar. Um, and if you open the chat, um, then you can see it'll default to saying to all panelists. You can also do to all panelists and attendees. Um, so you can choose who you're sending the note to. Um, and what we like to do is just real quickly um, try that out just to see if you can find the chat. Um, so that's first thing. And you're going to use this chat box to share responses to questions that we have um, throughout the webinar. So this will be kind of like the like interaction part. Um, where if I have a question, then you would throw it in the chat. So that's the first part of Zoom that we're going to use is the chat. The second part of Zoom that we're going to use is the Q&A feature. Um, so the Q&A feature is where you would want to put any questions or issues that you have. Um, well, issues within reason. So like aim for like TCI related questions and issues and things that you think that either me or Kelsey or Sarah will be able to um, answer. Um, and then we're going to keep a close eye on the Q&A to try to make sure that we're able to answer all your questions um, by the end. And if we do somehow run out of time, like we will for sure follow up via email um, and make sure that we get all the questions. But so far on these webinars, we've been usually pretty good about knocking them all out. Kelsey is awesome about um, getting all the questions and then also sending them my way if we need to. Um, there is a raise hand feature, which you're more than welcome to raise your hand up and down. I just probably will ignore you. So, um, you know, feel free, but like, We'll try to pay attention. Maybe Kelsey, you want to pay attention to it, but like I, I have say, to, admit, yeah. I have to. Admit, I'm terrible at the phrase hand feature. So like, so do yes. just try to use um, Q and A for like real questions. Like, how do I do something? How do I access something? You know, where do I get it? And then use chat for just interactions during it. Okay. Awesome. Um, all right, so let's practice using the chat right now um, and do a very quick, simple icebreaker. Um, we'd like to start positive. So something positive um, that you've experienced so far during distance learning. Um, it can be as simple as just, I get to go to the bathroom when I want to. Um, whatever, your, whatever your positive experience has been um, with distance learning so far, um, and just toss that in the chat. So I'll give you about 15 seconds of silence, and then I'll start looking at some of them in the chat. One positive thing you've experienced so far. I love seeing all the positives rolling on in. I do like there's a lot of good family ones. <laughs> It is kind of, it's, it's interesting. Like it's not easy depending on how old your kids are as to exactly, you know, like, I mean, Kelsey, how old are yours? Like, you have, oh gosh, mine are seven, five and two. So, yeah, so I think you hit, I think you've got about as hard as you can do. <laughs> um, a, lot of, a, lot of people, a lot of my friends that have like high school kids are like, oh, it's not that bad, but yeah. <laughs> so, but I it is nice to have time with the family and have them be able to like connect with your family. So like, see a lot of them like connecting with their daughter. That's awesome. Elaine, like, it just, I mean, that, that's, that I think is a major benefit of this. Um, and then, so some of the other ones that we see coming in are, you know, just 
being able to, for some students, it being able to help. Like we've heard that a lot, but some students have actually been able to focus better. Some students um, actually work better than they may have even been in the classroom. So it's interesting to kind of give different learners a different, different chance at, um, at learning in a different way. Um, so just kind of ha have to remember too, that although they are great to have all these positives, we do know that it's also a challenging time. <laughs> so we know that it is not easy right now. Um, every district, every state, frankly, probably every school is doing something different. And like, we're all just, you know, throwing things to see what's gonna stick. So do give yourself a little grace, give yourself time to learn, um, you know, time to, you know, just try it, try different things. Um, and, you know, don't necessarily, you know, yeah, we just, we can't kill ourselves. Like we gotta, <laughs> we gotta all be able to go back and, and head back next time. But you know, hopefully what's going to be cool about this is that when we come out on the other side, we'll all be better off, that we'll have learned a lot of new tools and skills, and that we'll have the best of both worlds when we do get to get back in the classroom um, and both see students and then also use these digital tools in good ways. So thank you guys very much for sharing those in the icebreaker. Um, I think we just have to kind of keep a, keep a, keep a good, good face on it, um, but hopefully during this webinar, our goal is to give you lots of good tools um, to help you conduct your distance learning um, with your K-5 students. All right, so these are the main topics that we're gonna aim for today um, during the webinar. Um, first is using distance learning investigations. So we're actually gonna start with the hard stuff first. So this is if you wanna try to really branch out and have students do some of the investigations, we wanna show you um, both that there are investigations, like there might be some that are more video-based that have a good shot that students could do at home, um, and then some that have materials, but it might be kind of common things that maybe students or parents would have um, and so if you make it optional, then maybe some would be able to participate. So we want to give you some ideas for distance learning, um, and we also have some distance learning tips. Um, we have a thing called Super Simple Science that you may or may not have seen, um, and we have been putting those into PDFs so that it will be easier to share quickly and easily. Um, they have already exist online, um, so students have online access, that's great, but we wanted to give you another option, so we'll show you that. So that, that'll be that first part, is kind of like the really cool, like, you know, keep science going <laughs> and really like be doing science um, at home. Then we're gonna shift to kind of the easiest three ways to use TCI at home. So we'll talk about how you can send the notes and the lesson game and the text and kind of some of the simpler things that like, you know, are absolutely no problem at all um, at home. But that was kind of like your second level. So first is the goal, if you can try to get it done, but depends on, you know, equity and what students have available. Second will be what, you know, a lot of students, anybody can use. And then third thing, we'll look at assignments and settings. Um, and really just answer any questions in, in, in that you might have. So like, especially when we get to the assignments and the settings sections, like usually that's when there's a lot of questions that pour in about things that you can do and kind of how to adjust things. So um, that's the order. Kelsey, does that look right? Anything else that I'm missing? <laughs> No, I think you hit on it. And, and we'll just tell you, even though we've got the question answer piece at the end, if at any point in time you see something and you want to know, you have a question, just as Nathan already said, shoot it to us in that question, the Q&A piece. And, and if we can answer it live, we will. If I can answer it um, and type you out an answer, I will. So please um, don't feel like you have to wait till the end. Just ask away. Yep. So we're going to go now and look um, live. Um, it the subscription. So this is a subscription that you would have like the teacher resources online. Um, and this is the third grade subscription. But again, it, what will change is just up here across, across the bar at the top, like you'll have a different grade depending on what grade um, you're teaching. Um, and so if we're assuming that most teachers have had a little bit of experience with like TCR, at least have like started on here. Um, but if not, I'm going to give like just a very quick kind of simple summary. We have loads and loads of webinars, how-to videos, like just very explicit like walkthrough tips um, for any of these aspects of like kind of how do I use the teacher stuff, how do I use the student stuff. So if this feels like it's going too fast, like if you if it is the very first time you've seen TCI, um, then please do reach out to us in the Q&A and Kelsey and um, Sarah can get you resources um, for the basics, um, but I'll just do a very quick kind of summary of those basics now. Um, so the first thing that we're going to, oh, hang on. So Patricia just mentioned, Sarah, do you know if everybody is muted? Yeah, I think on webinar, okay. automatically everyone's muted. Okay, I wonder what the poker chip noise is then. <laughs> um, sorry, uh, maybe, yeah, I'm not sure. So uh, um, I don't think I have anything in my room, but you know, who knows? <laughs> um, so let's look first at the um, grade three overall content page. So this is the content page that you come to when you first open your subscription. 
And there are four units that are these four boxes that are on the page. So you have unit one, unit two, and if you scroll down, you can see unit three and unit four. Um, the unit level pieces may be a little, oh, hang on, tell me it says Mike on the Apple Buzz is a scraped shirt. Oh, good, good, okay. Here, I can hold it out. Okay. Oh, look at that. Let me know if you, let me know if you hear it again. Okay, and there's dog, so that one definitely is me. <laughs> Oh, Nevin, we've all been there. All right, take two. <laughs> I love working at home, yes. <laughs> okay, thank you very much for pointing that out, um, Patricia. Um, so these are the four um, units that you have um, in the third grade program. And so to get to one of the units, like you just literally click on the title, so environments and living things. And this will show you um, a couple pieces. The top part shows you the unit storyline. So this is like a, a, like introduces students to the overall unit and kind of sets the stage and sets up the performance assessment. Um, so this is something that students can watch on their own. Um, and I'll just play like- Hi, right here. I'm Angela. And I'm then like students can blow it up or you know, you'd be able to blow it up in class. I'm so a paleontologist for my city's natural history museum. I study things that lived long ago. Recently, I- Okay, so the, so the first video, they're all about just like, just write it a minute so they're not too long. It'll introduce um, the unit. And then if you scroll down, the orange box that says not visible to students is called that because it's not visible to students, right? So students don't see this box, but you have planning pieces here. Um, so these are things that you probably would do more with if you're doing it in class. So for distance learning, I don't know how much I would stress over this piece right now. Um, I think I would just kind of keep scrolling down and then look at the individual lessons. Um, that will be easier for distance learning. Okay. Um, now, one thing I do want to point out before we go on is that the performance assessment um, so at the very bottom of each unit, there will be a performance assessment. Some of them have two. This one actually has two performance assessments. Um, these are something that a lot of elementary teachers, if you've been teaching with TCI, you may or may not have been doing these in class um, because you were doing all the lessons. But if you are doing it remotely, some of these might be the best thing to give for distance learning. So that would be our first tip for distance learning um, investigations is if you click on it, like this one's going to say, um, you know, building an exhibit on Colombian mammoths. And so this will walk through um, all the steps of you know, these lessons where they're going to research Colombian mammoths, um, then they're going to write a plaque for their exhibit, and it'll give directions for writing the plaque, and then they'll create art for their exhibit. So all these directions are already there, already done online for students. And so these can be, the, the performance assessment could be a really good kind of big picture, like what are the main ideas of the, um, you know, at the unit level? Now, the one caveat will be like, and this is true for all investigations, right? Like this one does in theory have team roles. So in theory, they were supposed to work together in teams. So if you're able, like it may be in the upper grades, if you're able to have students work together, um, then they would be able to, you know, kind of work as a team or if they can meet on Zoom, then that could work. But most situations will probably have to do these as individual assignments. And so the student and then the parent could assist or you can also, um, you know, kind of do check-ins with students. Um, and that would still be okay for the vast majority of them. Um, it'll still be fine to do the um, performance assessments that way. So that's, that's one important thing is the unit level will always have um, at the overview, the video that introduces the unit, and then the performance assessment is where they do the activity, kind of like the, it's like kind of PBL style activity that they'll do um, to um, hit the main ideas of that unit. Okay. Um, so if you have questions on that, let us know. And then the next step that we're gonna go into is the individual lessons. So that's one goal. And next step is individual lessons. Yeah, so far, so Nathan, we're good on questions. Click on lesson one. So I'm going to click on lesson one, where do organisms live, just because it's lesson one. And if you have not used TCI at all, they are kind of the basic layout is there it automatically takes you to a page that we call the planning page. The big purple button here is planning. And this will have the teacher directions, right? So it's kind of all those things that you expect to see in your lesson guide. So it'll say, you know, for the lesson overview, what's the essential question? What are we doing in the activities? What are the objectives? So just the basics, like of what would I need to know if I'm gonna plan the lesson? Um, obviously, when you're thinking kind of, can I do this lesson distance wise, these are gonna be helpful. Um, you know, this one is saying like, you're gonna have students learn about four different environments and then they're gonna match organisms to the environments they would best survive in. So that actually sounds like it might have some potential distance wise because you're like, okay, well like, so, you know, if it's pictures of organisms, they could probably do that at home. So definitely, you know, reading here is a first good step is looking at your overview. 
Um, next is also, I would probably like kind of check the advanced prep because if the advanced prep says, you know, set up six station boxes with like thousands of materials in it, then that might not be your ideal distance learning one. Um, now, when you look at the list of materials right below it, you might be like, oh, okay. Like, so this one doesn't have any physical materials. Like they're just gonna be um, these handouts um, that you wanna give students access to these pictures. Um, but this will be an easy one then to do distance wise because there are, it's a series of pictures and images that they're gonna use. Um, and so you could send this um, you know, PDF to students or share it with them on their Google Classroom so they have access to it. Um, you could also download it and then break it apart if you wanna just share little pieces of it um, with students. So that's another good thing to check as materials to get a sense of like for distance learning, would this be a good lesson? Um, and then just because it has a lot of stuff, I wouldn't necessarily be scared off from it, but just check to see like, okay, are those unique items that are like not gonna be at home? Or are they like, I mean, is it like paper clips and paper and markers and pens? And like, so maybe, maybe there are some things that um, students would be able to use no matter where they are. Um, especially like engineering activities, like just because it, like just because they're not given the stuff that's in the kit. Yes, it's nice to have the TCI kit, um, but just because those items aren't there, a lot of times they can still do the engineering activities and those investigations um, just with their own stuff that's at home. Like because that's kind of the point of engineering. A lot of times is like finding what materials you think might work out. Um, all right, so that's that's the main part of the planning page is clicking lesson overview and the materials to get a sense for distance learning if it'll be good. There's plenty of other information on here that I'm not gonna, not going to click right now, but there's tons of science background for the content knowledge. Learning progression is where it all fits in in NGSS. Differentiation is specific ways to differentiate. I actually would say for distance learning, you might want to click here because a lot of these modifications will make life easier for for all students if they're using distance learning. So sometimes some of these modifications, like you know, sharing the script for the video with students, like that might be helpful um, for some students if you sent that home with them. Okay. So those tips of the differentiation would be worth looking at. And then of course, enhancing learning. So that's gonna have other videos, websites, simulations, things like that, um, that you can have students do. So these could be you know, kind of outside of TCI, um, additional things that you could send as kind of easier resources um, and just kind of simple resources that they would use. All right, so that really is it finally for the planning page. So that's that's like looking at all of it from the teacher side as to like, what do you think you would be using for distance learning? And I think the planning page is helpful for that. Um, and then the next two pages um, are called fast track lesson guide and then master lesson guide. And so what's important to learn to, to realize about these is that your students can see all of this, right? So when I click on the fast track, um, all of these steps. So this, when I click on observing phenomena here, and then I see this image and this question. So students can see that. When I see, when I go to the next slide and there's a video, students can see that. Um, when I go to the next slide and it says like, oh, here's a little something that you could try together with your parents. Um, you know, why do you think they live here instead of somewhere else? So like, so these are all slides that students have access to. Um, and that if you assign the lesson to students, they could then do this on their own. You don't have to share anything else with them. The one, difference is that there's these orange lesson supports. These, because it's called teacher helper, these are just for you. So the lesson support, like this is just a specific tip for you. Um, and so students can't see that. Um, let me scroll down to see if I can, oh, and here, anything orange, like showing the answer key, right? But students can't see that. That's just for you. Um, let me see if I can find something that students could see. Oh, maybe I chose a poor lesson for this. They can't, like they don't see the ELA standards because that would not excite them. Um, here you go. So the green ones that say visible to students. Um, so these are the ones that students could see. So the connections to your life and the science concepts, like those are ones that students could click on and can use to kind of drive the lesson on their own. So that's, that's kind of basic setup of these pages. So each of these pages, this expand and collapse will have all the pieces of the investigations. Um, and so this is kind of what you'll follow. Like this is what students would follow if they were doing the investigation. And it's what you would follow in class typically. So if you can do it as a webinar or as a Zoom, or maybe as you doing a screencast and like just recording a little bit, like you could, you know, do this part where you're walking through it together and saying, all right, where do cacti typically grow? And then students could all write it in chat. So for a lot of these pieces, like they're, they're gonna be simple enough that you could kind of do that interaction and get some of those discussions going with students, or you could come up with another way where you just say, all right, let's like just look at this part on your own. And then I'd like you to write the questions in here um, on your own. So students would then write their answer here um, on their own. And then that lets them, um, then you can see their answer um, that they put here. Okay. So that's, that's kind of two different ways to use these slides that are built in. Um, these will have directions that to walk through the investigations as you go through.
So that's called, um, that's, that's called the fast track. And just want to show you one example of one that I think you probably could do. So like um, this one says examining environments. So I'm going to click on examining environments, that section. And it says an environment is all the living things that are surrounded by an organism for each environment, blah, blah, blah. So it's like it's giving the background. And then you can blow up the slides. So just go to the full screen mode. And students can do the same thing, right? Just on their side, they can blow it up to look full screen. Um, and you can click through. And so there's these audio tracks that are built in that are telling you about a desert. Um, and these are also in the notebook. So um, I'll show you that in a second where to find that. Um, so students could read along with it um, if you want them to read, or they could just play these audio tracks um, and start to learn. This about the hot is a hot desert. A desert is a very dry environment. It does not rain very okay, often so in the desert. Four different um, environments that they're going to learn about um, as they go through. So just want to really emphasize that even though um, students would be at home and they can't necessarily do every type of, every lab type style investigation. There are a lot of other investigations like this one. Um, there are three dimensional investigations, but they use other practices and other cross cutting concepts um, that might not necessarily be like carrying out an experiment. Um, so these are still, you know, worth assigning to students um, when they're um, even if they're at home or doing distance learning. So that is the kind of basic fast track. So we want to see if you guys have questions about that, definitely put them in the Q&A um, or in chat. And the other thing that we wanted to share um, while you're coming up with questions is just the difference between fast track and between master. Um, so fast track um, is our suggested kind of, you know, quick, efficient way to move through the content. And that's all these purple bars. So each of the chunks of the lesson um, are these purple ones. And then the grayed out ones um, are the ones that are available in the master. So they're extensions that you can do. Um, and you can think of the extensions sometimes as extra scaffolding. It can also be kind of like something more for advanced learners. Um, so it's good to go back if you need to have more practice um, or it's good for like, you know, extending and, and going further. So it's obviously gonna take a, a lot more time. Like it's almost double the time. Um, but if you're, you know, if, if you're focused more on these um, in investigations that can be done at home, you might have more time here. Like, so if you're not going to do, say, like an investigation that was like a, you know, a full, like a lab experiment that had, you know, like test tubes or something, then it'd be easier for you to do the master. So the one thing you have to remember is this orange box down here is telling me not visible to students or visible to students. So I'm going to click on master and watch what happens. So this master lesson guide, I don't have the box. So I have my settings set right now that students can see this master lesson guide. And then if I go back to the fast track, it says, oh, not visible to students, so only one type. So that's the other first thing that we'll show. We're gonna to go to settings and show a lot more settings in a second, but the first setting that's important is if you're gonna assign an investigation to students, then just make sure in student views and features. So I'm going, I went to settings in the purple bar and then student views and features. And so when you go to this first line, investigation, you choose, can they see the fast track or the master? If you turn off, they literally can't see any investigations. Um, and you could do that if you want to shut everything down. But like, so the, for the basic, choose which of those you want. I would probably advocate right now to just default to the master so that you have more options of things students can do at home. Um, but it's totally up to you as to how you want to use that. Okay. So that is, again, in settings, investigation, and then fast track and master. Okay. All right, so, um, so far, we are on the investigation page. And one of the things that we said, as I was like, oh, there's that audio track, right? So for the examining environments, um, there was um, a script that was there for the audio. So where do you find things like that? Or where do you find other things that students would use? Um, that is along the left sidebar in materials. So if you click materials, then that will send you to all of the resources um, for that note. So this is the audio transcript that we talked about. So if you want to provide um, the audio transcript, then that's something that you could do. So that's the same thing that um, we were just hearing the little girl read to us. And so that's, that's an option. Okay. Um, and then any other materials that you might want are also here. So the um, placards or the picture cards, um, this has you know, things that you might send that has all the pieces of the investigation. And then if you're using, this part's a little confusing. So if you've had TCI for a long time, you might be using the interactive student notebook, like the black and white consumable version. So that is a copy here of the interactive student notebook. Um, if you just very recently are using TCI, then you're using the science journal. Um, just to show you those two. So this is the notebook. And then the science journal looks like this. 
So there's so they're kind of they're very similar, um, but it's just a different layout that we've used the last couple of years. Okay, but literally anything that you would need if you're ever like, I need an answer key, I need a handout, I need a something, um, then along the left side, materials is has to be where the answer to that is. Okay? And Nathan, um, while you're on this page, I mean, yeah. we just had a question about like how could we could we add this to Google Classroom, but could we just show them there where they can drop it right into their drive from this page? So if you want to download like the, say like the notebook directly to Google Classroom, then over here in the actions, that's what you'll choose. So like I just clicked right on it, that opens a PDF. If you click on actions, then you can either download the PDF to your computer or save directly to Google Drive. So for any one of these, if I want to download the science journal or say the placards, because the placard you need for the investigation, it has all the picture cards um, for the different organisms. So I click actions and then save to Google Drive. And then that'll let you choose where you want to save it um, to your Google Drive. Okay. Mine is real fast right now. Okay. Um, also, anything else on that one? Okay, so, uh, uh, Lindy had a question of where's the notebook? So hopefully that makes sense, Lindy. So like the two choices, um, interactive student notebook is if you're using the, if you had like the black and white consumable notebooks and then science journal is the more updated newer one. Um, that has like the color um, that has both the text and has the notes in it. So it's kind of nifty. Um, but again, that's if you're using the it just more recently. Okay. Anything else that you see that we missed, Kelsey, on materials or the or the basics of the investigation stuff? I know. I'm, and I think maybe, and this goes back to the last question about the notebook, could you go back to the fast track too? We yep. open up that observing phenomenon, but if they were to scroll down, kind of look at some of those below carrots where you could see, right, the notebook for the students. Yeah, so actually let's let's look at that comparison. So like yeah. we I, I had written for the observing phenomena, like it has like think of what you already know and then write questions you have about where organisms live. And then here's where you can type in your answers to that question. Or you could be doing that in print, right? So this is that same page that has observing phenomena on it and then has the question right here that students could answer. So if you want to send this PDF home, then students could answer in the PDF instead of answering it online. So either of those options is fine. Like they can do it in print here on the PDF um, that you send them the PDF um, or put that in your Google Classroom or they can answer directly on our online part. Totally. I think that makes sense. I mean, Nathan, the next question that I've got is about just assigning these right to students, how we could do that. Okay, what so does that look like? for assigning investigations, um, you'll go to assignments up here. So assignments. And if it over opens, okay. So now I've clicked on assignments and then I have a green button that says create new. So I click on the create new and then I would choose, I'm in lesson one and I can choose any of these pieces of that lesson to assign directly. So if I was gonna assign the fast track or the master investigation, then I click on that. So I'm now assigning the master investigation for lesson one. So that's the first part. Um, you can skip assessment right now, but, um, and if we have questions at the end, we can look at assessments. So like you can also give all the assessments online and this is the same place you do it. So you could create assignment and you can either pick, I want you to do part of the notes, which we'll get to in a second, um, or create an assessment. So all of your assignments will be in this create assignment page. Once you've picked what you wanna assign, then you choose who you wanna assign it to. So the default is all classes, all students. So if that's good, then just leave that. <laughs> if you do have a very specific, like I wanna just do it for one class or I wanna just do it for fake student A but not B and C, then you can choose exactly which students you wanna assign things to. And then it defaults to being available immediately and then you can choose if you want a due date. So say I'm gonna say you need to have it done by tomorrow. Um, if you have it like this, it's just gonna assign it to students. If you click the enforce due date, that means it will shut it off when students um, are past that due date. Um, so that's the one thing to be careful about is if you don't, especially with distance learning, like if you don't want them um, to, you know, be able to take the test later on, then that's when you want to do enforce due date. But if you are a little worried that like some students are going to ask access it at different times, then I probably wouldn't click enforce due date. I would just assign it so that they can see in their student side that it's been assigned, um, but then not give too much, you know, not, not put a due date there. So that's how you would assign the investigation, this first part. 
Um, and in just a second, we're going to move to the rest of this, the text with notes, because again, that's going to be in the easy ways to use DCI. So this is if you are ambitious and you're using the investigations and doing that part at home um, and having them do the fast track and the master and kind of the, the fun stuff at home, um, then they would do that here with the investigation. Right, one last thing before we move to the easy versions is that in all of the investigations, so when you're here on the investigation planning page, if you look up to the top, there are what we call like an alert bar up here, this little orange thing. Um, and this says distance learning tips. So these were just added um, very recently. And if you click on distance learning tips, it'll give a suggestion for this particular investigation, this particular lesson. So it's saying, hey, when you're doing this lesson, just an FYI to make sure that students see that there's audio in the examining environment steps. Um, and then students can complete their online prompts and do the sorting organisms pretty easily. So it's saying this is a good one to use um, with distance learning. If it's not a great lesson to use with distance learning or it'd be really hard to use with distance learning, um, then it won't have this tip here. So those will just be there for um, the kind of suggestions on how you might modify or use the investigation for distance learning. Okay. And then one other important thing is that we also have these super simple science, um, which are really good for remote learning because they're a little bit more independent. They're like very cool little phenomena based readings. Um, and then those will um, have little activities that go along with them, like little mini investigations, um, which would be great for students to try at home, to do it with parents, to do it with guardians at home. Um, and the way that you find the super simple science, um, there's two ways. There's one way is to go online and it's in one of the sections. So I'm really not going to show you that now, but if you're used to the online and you want to navigate there, you can do that. Um, but the easiest way to find super simple science is just to go to materials. So click on materials. And in for this lesson one, should be at the bottom of each one, there will be a super simple science. So I want to open up one as a sample. And every single lesson has one of these. So this is, um, this one's about island animals. And so these are great kind of stories um, that you could um, have, I mean, you could do it where you read it together if you're doing it live or you have a recording of you reading it for students. Um, students could read it with adults at home. And then um, at the end of it, will be a little activity. So this one says, make a model of a local environment. So it says, make a model showing the kinds of organisms in your um, local environment, or create a model of the Galapagos Islands ones, which are the ones you just read about. Um, so basically, it's kind of you know creating the diorama that um, is kind of like the classic um, assignment um, where they would show how organisms meet their needs in that um, little model that they create. Okay, so these are just like kind of like, these are just useful things that are easier, kind of simpler science um, that would be good to do at home or good to do as independent assignments um, that you don't necessarily even have to assign something inside the subscription. Like you just send this directly to parents. All right, so, so that is kind of a lot of different options there, but that is really all of the like kind of the, the true kind of ways to get the real science across to students, even if you are distance learning, um, would be using the fast track and master. So having students access the slides and access the directions and the images and the videos and the audio. Um, or from materials to have students use the super simple science um, are kind of two of the best ways to use the investigations with distance learning. Okay. Um, so I want to pause there for a second. So the next thing we're going to go on to are the easy things to use that like would be very, very easy. Um, so I want to pause for any questions that people have. And then if you just want to jot down in the chat, um, what's the one part that you want to try so far? So anything that you like so far that you've seen um, that you think you might want to try with students um, that have been so far in the, in the webinar. So one thing you want to try so far, and then we'll also pause just so we can uh, give you time to ask questions if you need. Awesome. And I know you're going to talk about this next, Nathan, because we're talking about some of the really easy things, but we do have a question about vocab. So I think that's actually perfect leading into the next piece. Okay. So vocab for sure. Okay. And there was one question I saw, I think I've lost where it was, but somebody had asked like, so the super simple science are what were the old, in, like in the textbook, the physical books, like they were the reading furthers and they just didn't have any activities with them. Um, so we've tried to split those out so they're easier to use um, because they really don't need to be stuck right after whatever chapter they're reading. So if, so if you do have the print book and you've seen the thing called reading further, that is correct. I forget, someone asked that and I've, I think I've scrolled past it now. <laughs> All right, so these are, these are like, I mean, again, this is pretty advanced here. So like now we want to show you like the super easy things that like in any lesson, any time, you know, all students could do at home. So when you're in your subscription, I'm, so right now we've looked at the unit up here, um, the overview. We talked about the performance assessments, which are like the really good, you know, PBL style. Um, and then now we looked at investigations. So let's keep going to the next thing on the purple sidebar. 
um, that says text with notes. So the text with notes, um, this is going to be, um, if you're using the physical textbook, this would be obviously the content in the physical print hardback book. Um, if you're using the consumable journals, um, this is also going to be, the, the text should match either way. So for both of them, it should be the exact same text um, that's in here. Um, but this will be the online version of the text. So this would be an easy thing to assign to students. Um, and you can choose whether you actually have to assign it or not. Like, so the default is that all students can see this. So right now, if you haven't changed your settings, you can simply just say, you know, go to lesson two and do the reading or go to lesson one and do the reading. And online, what's nice about that is you have all these different tools that students can use in the reading. So they can adjust their reading level to go down to a, a reading level B. So A is on Lexile, B is about 25% lower Lexile for their grade. Um, that's for grades two to five, I think. I don't think K and one have a lower reading level. Um, and then there's the play, so you can use the text-to-speech so it'll play. Where do organisms live? Science. And it's going to highlight each word as it goes through. Um, you can click on the Spanish button, and it'll switch to Spanish, and then you can click on Spanish again, and it'll switch back from Spanish. Um, one important thing about that Spanish is that that is like professionally translated Spanish, so if you do have Spanish speakers that need it, like really encourage them to use our button. Don't use Google Translate. Like Use our actual button that's there, because um, that's going to be the professionally translated Spanish. Um, there's a main ideas button. Um, so when you are in any of these sections, like if you click the, the star uh, to see the main ideas, it'll be these blue main ideas right here. And as you can see, I'm highlighting. So if I want to highlight, that's also another feature. So you can choose which highlights you want. Let me just do full example is blue. So the highlighting feature is the next one. And then students can add notes. I can't, I can't do it right now as a teacher, but it's, it pops up a box right here. And then students can add their notes right there. Um, and then one important thing is if students do not have online access or maybe they have sketchy online access that may or may not you know, be good, they can download the text to Google Drive or they can download the text um, to a PDF. So any student can do this or you can do this and send it to a student. So if I click print text, then I could send this to the student um, that has all the text in it or they could do it themselves or put it into Google Drive. And that also, if you throw it into Google Drive, then that makes it easy then to um, copy paste it and just send out certain pieces of it um, or break it up however you want for the, for the students or to add in your own assignments in the middle of the text or something. Yeah. Um, and Claire was asking about the A, B, Lexile again. Like, so like the A is the default, it's automatically on the Lexile and then B is 25% lower. So if you switch to B, um, it's a 25% lower Lexile. Now do note the way Lexile works, I mean, you're, you guys are elementary teachers, so most of you know, but like, so Lexile is really about sentence structure. So it's going to be, you know, shorter sentences, you know, a lot of times it'll break up a sentence instead of having comma and it'll break it up into two sentences. So it's not like it's going to be like groundbreakingly different, but it should be easier for a student to track and to read across um, as they're doing Lexile. Um, so this, are, these are the kind of the key text features. If anyone saw the green shared Google Classroom up here. We had a couple of people asking about the Google Drive. So you can also share directly to Google Classroom um, right here. And so if you click that, um, then I am saying, I wanna share it to my class that I've set up here, create an assignment. And then when I'm doing that, it's gonna automatically put the link in for this section. So it'll link right to section one, and then I can put whatever directions I want in here about like, you know, read this and answer the questions, or I want you to read and then respond below um, and have like a discussion from it. So that's gonna be the assignment feature in Google Classroom. Um, so that's this green button at the top is the Google Classroom button. Okay. Um, and one of the questions from Amy was, will it work on Schoology? And it absolutely should. I know we have a lot of districts that do use Schoology, so it should work with Schoology. The problem is that you might have to work with your IT guys. Um, I'm not sure how much setup is involved, but I've definitely seen it on Schoology a lot. Um, but I'm not, I'm not sure if you need to work with your IT department, depending on your single sign-on and how they're doing rostering um, in, your, in your department. Yeah, Nathan, I'll answer that. The, really, the biggest thing is kids have to be logged in to TCI. So one, whether, the, whether okay. that be through your single sign-in or um, just if you push something out through Schoology, they just have to make sure that they're signed into their TCI subscription to access those links. Okay. Um, and then Sarah, thanks. So Sarah just posted in chat like a video about using Schoology. So that would be a good one to go to. Okay. Um, so a couple questions too about like kind of the, um, how do you, someone had asked, how do you assign these? So I do want to do that, but I also want to make sure we go back to um, showing kind of how students sign in, like just the very basics. Um, and then I want to also move it over to show a student um, version. Um, so let me see. So this 
text with notes. So it, it has the text, and then if you scroll down, there are these little check for understanding. So these are different. Some of them are multiple choice. Some of them are um, little videos. Some of them are drag and drop. There's like a variety of different types of these um, checks for understanding. So like these are kind of like a playground that student will do. And then they'll actually take their notes down here at the bottom of the page. So that's where they write their notes. Um, so what I want to do is show you kind of on the student side how that would look. So how do we assign it to students and then how would that look? So let's first assign it to students. So just same thing we did before. So if we want to assign, we go to assignments. And then I want to say create new. And this time instead of assigning the investigation, I'm going to say it blows up bigger. Instead of assigning the investigation, I want to now assign one of the sections or multiple sections of text. So I can say I just want to assign section one or section two. So this is how you have um, your assignments if you're doing sections. Um, now note that when you're doing these sections, students automatically can see all the text unless you lock it down. So I can show you in settings a little later if somebody's interested in that about where you would lock down the whole subscription. So right now this is really just assigning it so students know that they're supposed to do it. But if you wanna hide everything and lock it down and then when you assign, that's the only time they see the text, that is an option. So once you've assigned it, um, then let me show you where, let me switch over here to a um, incognito. So this is black, it has a black bar at the top. So this is my incognito browser to show you the student subscription. So let me sign out from here real quick. So the way that students would sign in is they would go to teachtci.com and then there's a student sign in button on the right hand side. And so they do student sign in and then they just need your email. So this was my email. And then what did I call it, fake student? Now the one caveat to this is this is true for if, for if you just are new to TCI or if students are, um, if you're kind of just using it for COVID right now and that, that, that's the reason you've seen TCI, like this is how students would sign in. However, if your district has adopted TCI and if you've been using TCI but just not using the online part, then the one thing I would be careful with is you might have to have students sign in through like Clever or it could be through a different um, method like through Schoology or through something where they're signing in through your district. Um, so that's the one thing like, you know, be a, some students may have to do it through rostering. So like if you have a, it, say, and the easiest way to probably tell that is if you go to your classes and you see all your students there, um, then they, they probably won't sign in um, from our website. So do um, put in the Q&A if you think you have a special situation about students signing in so Kelsey and Sarah can kind of help you out with that. But those are kind of the two, two typical ways is students are rostered and so they're just going to go to Clever or go to your district page or students are not rostered and then they go to teachtci.com just like you would and they click sign in and then we um, just like we would click sign in for the teacher. All right, so let me show you then what it looks like on the student side. So this is the student side. And um, if I was doing the text with notes, so what's important is to see that it should look ex very, very similar to what you have on your side, right? So there's just gonna be a couple things that students can't see. Um, so when I'm doing with test with text with notes here, like so now I, as a teacher, I couldn't do the notes, but I can now add notes here. So I can add my own notes for this section. And then you could highlight as a student. And then the way that students are going to see whatever notes or whatever highlights they put is that they go um, over here at, in the bottom section, there's something called my notes in the references. So they click my notes and then they can see for the intro, these are the notes that I had and these are the highlights that I had. For section one, these are the notes I took, these are the highlights that I had. Um, so the notes is a really nice feature for them to be able to use. Um, at this time, teachers can't see the notes yet. We are trying to do that where we're going to build it in where like you could then, you know, see and grade their notes as well. Right now you would just grade their notebook answers. Um, but that's the, that's one thing that they can do is they can take notes. And then the other thing that we wanted to show you was um, Kelsey had said before is like just when we're doing that like observing phenomena. So this is the student view, right, of that master or the fast track, whichever one you let them see. And so just like number one as a teacher, I can click on observing phenomena. I click on it here as a student and I'm gonna literally see the same thing. The only difference is instead of having the teacher helper on the right side, it now says student helper. And so like the teacher notes are hidden and it's just stuff that's gonna help me as a student. But then same thing that we did before, like they can, students can click through the slides and can use it and then they can answer um, and type their answer right here. 
And this is probably something you'll use more in upper elementary um, where students would be answering. But if parents are able to assist students or if you're able to train them on it, then like they're, I mean, my best friend's a kindergarten teacher and she actually has her kids do some of these, not all the prompts, but she has them do a couple of them and, and actually type them in. Um, and then she just uses it mostly as discussion pieces that they're gonna use. Um, so just wanna show you where that pops up then. So we're just, I'm answering right here. And then, so that's what the student can do in the investigations and taking the notes. And I'll go back to the teacher side so you can see what that looks like. So back on the teacher side, oh, I blew mine up. Okay, so this is back on the teacher side. If I go to grades, this is where I would see any of the work that my students have done. So um, because this box is blue, I can tell that, okay, fake student has answered at least something in the notebook, whereas B and C have not started it at all. So those students haven't tried anything. Um, and so I can click view grade notebook. And then when you're there, I can see, okay, that's the answer that I literally just wrote, um, answer here. And so like the blue boxes are the answers that students had. And you can see there's a little answer key right below it. Um, and then as you scroll down, the red boxes are a hint that, okay, there's nothing that's been given there. And you can also see it, there's a total of how many questions were answered, just so at a glance, you can see how questions were answered. Okay. Um, and then you can give a, a score for the notebook up here at the top. You can change that score. I think it defaults to five points and I put mine at 100. Um, so in your settings, you can change that score. Um, and then the last thing here is that you can grade by student or you can grade by question. So if you click question, this is a good way. If you just wanna grade everybody's at one time, like the questions that think about what you already know, then I can see student one's answer, student two didn't answer, student C, sorry, B didn't answer and C didn't answer. Um, so I can see pretty easily like who answers and who didn't and then I can add comments um, and then that will show up. So I can see that my comment was saved. And then if I go back over to my student side, then you can see whatever notes your teacher wrote. So whatever I wrote for the student side will also pop up here. All right, so I wanna pause there. So that is really the, the easiest things to use are assigning notes and assigning the reading. Like that could be done for any lesson, any time, even if you don't have a chance to do the investigation or you don't wanna assign the investigations. Um, Kim has a very good question. Can you get to the student side when you're in the admin of the account? So not yet, but it's coming very, very soon. So right now I had to sign in as a fake student. So I had, had just made a fake student in my account, um, but that works great unless you're rostered. And then if you're rostered and like, you know, if it's all done through Clever or if it's already put in automatically by your IT guys, um, then that's kind of annoying um, because you can't create fake students. So we are creating um, a view. I What's it called, Kelsey? Uh, I know, we've changed the name. It's a feature though that's supposed like, to be rolled out here very soon. Yeah, I think it's called like sign in as a student. So yes, it'll let you like, yes. it'll let you see exactly what your students are seeing. So that should be coming in the next, really the next week or two um, to make it a lot easier. Yeah, I think it's gonna um, be really great. Yeah, and um, Jennifer's asking like, if you have a student assignment, you make a comment. Kelsey, I don't think it tells them that you I don't, I don't think it notifies. I know that no, it doesn't, but if they were on okay. that, if they're working and you, and you said it to them, I mean, they would be yeah. able to see it if they, you know, make sure if they can't see it, I always tell my students refresh your page right? yeah. for some reason they couldn't see it, but it would not notify them. Yeah. And it will, so you'll get a notification via email, like a summary each day of like, of what student work um, and which students have turned things in. So like, you can always look at that email and that email will literally just send you to the grades page. And so on the grades page is where you can see which students, like the blue again means that it's in progress, um, that students have started to, started to work on it. Yeah. Um, so the other piece that is also very easy to assign is called the lesson game. So I'm on the grades page still, and like you can see the notebook is here with the notes, and then the lesson game is the next piece. Um, and this one is, if you haven't played with them or haven't had your students play with them, it's totally worth like, you know, having students do at home. So it'll be um, just you know, six to 10 questions, depending on what grade you're in. Um, and they take the questions and then all this data gets sent back to you. Um, one nice thing is that we just changed the settings recently. So if you wanna have students just try this on their own, they can. Um, it used to be that you had to restart the lesson game for each individual student. So I wanna show you that in settings here, how you can control that. So this is one thing that we'd looked at earlier. So student views and features. So the first time we looked at this investigation level and we said, choose kind of fast track or choose master. Um, so for this one, you have a lot of control. If you want to lock down the text with notes or the lesson game, that's where you turn them off. So say you don't want students doing the lesson games at all, you can turn them off. 
And then in order for students to do the lesson game, you'd have to assign it. Okay, so it's a little bit dangerous. So it's like, so just notice if you turn something off, like if I turn off the text here, so right now, none of my students can see the text and none of them can see the lesson games because I turned them off right here. If I want them to see them, I would have to assign it. Okay, so the default is on. So right now, most of your students should be able to see the text and see the lesson games. Um, and then when you're assigning, so click on assignments, this is how you would then go and say, okay, now I want, when I go to assignment um, and I want to say, I want you to guys to do, you know, section one of that section, then you do it in assignment, okay? So default is that they can see everything and this assignment feature is really to just say like, you should do it, but if you have it turned off, if you have it locked down in settings, then this section is how they actually see the text and how they actually see the lesson games, okay? And just like you're gonna assign the text, you can also assign the lesson game. So down here it says lesson game. So same, same way that you would assign an investigation is the same way you assign a section is the same way you assign a lesson game, right? Each, each one of these are just gonna be in the assignments feature. All right, a couple other settings then that would be kind of useful to look at is um, the support features. So all those cool features that we saw that were in the text, you can choose whether students can access that. So somebody had asked earlier about the read aloud feature. Um, and so you could turn that off if you don't want students to use the read aloud feature, or if you don't want students to access the Spanish, or you don't want them to access the main ideas. Um, so all of these are meant to be supports um, for different groups and differentiation for different groups. You can actually edit these per student. So if you go in and edit it individually by student, you could say, okay, so in this, um, I wanna manage my students. And I can say, I want to turn off Spanish for everybody. Uh, actually, I probably should not do that because I'll forget that I did that. So let me turn Honestly, it back on. Honestly, I was gonna say, don't <laughs> yes, <thanks. laughs> say that setting. Yeah. The next time I do a presentation, I'll be like, where'd Spanish go? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but for each individual student, you can edit it and you can say, I wanna turn off just their you know, individual, like this student cannot see main ideas and cannot do the read aloud. So I want them to really um, use those features. Um, anything else in settings that you think is important, Kelsey? I know. I think you, I mean, you really, you covered well all of those different pieces. I think just if, I, I know I've had students come to me and say, oh, Mrs. Moore, I couldn't see something. And it was really a quick check of me go to my settings and make sure that I have them where they want to be. Yes. Right? Yeah. That, I mean. Yeah. If students say they can't see something, it's probably because you turned off a setting by accident yep. when you were messing with it. Oh, oh, the one before. thing was the restarting lesson games. So, um, by default, when like we've set up lesson games really to be a formative assessment. So students would go in, they would take it, and then you'll get their results and you'll see those in the grades. Um, if you want students to be able to retake it as many times as they want, then you would turn this on. Um, and the little I button tells you that, right? So I mean, we try to kind of make it obvious as you go through, but so students can retake their own lesson games if you turn that on. Um, and that one, I think, is a feature that we just very, very recently added. Um, so the thing that we definitely want to encourage you to do is if there are other ideas you have for like things that you think would, could make the subscription better and easier to use for your students with distance learning, um, then what you would do is you go up to your name and click help. And in here, this will be like really all the resources that you need, right? So if you just try to search and you just start saying like, I need to know you know, like where I find the notebook or where I find the journal. Like, you know, it's like, where do I find the materials I need? So there's lots of answers just if you start typing. Um, there is a really nice professional development that will walk you through whichever kind of content area is yours. So if you want to do elementary science, like it's a great like self-paced course. So at your own pace, you can go through the subscription. So that's good, especially if you have colleagues who have not been using the online part before, like to be able to like give them a sense of like, okay, here's, here's how the online set up. Um, or they can obviously watch the webinars too. And then the important one that I want to pr just promote is the product feedback button. So if you click that purple product feedback button, um, this is where you would give us, it just literally just asks for your name, school, subject, and then description. And so um, like recently we added like the ability to highlight. So, you know, want to be able to highlight text. So the reason we have highlighting of text is because enough teachers sent this in. So just kind of can't emphasize that enough that like this is how our software team decides what they're gonna do next is what gets sent in by teachers. Um, and so please, please, please do use this as you're you know, playing with TCI, whether you've adopted or whether you're piloting or whether you're just using it right now. Like, at, you know, if you have ideas for it, please let us know. Um, and you can use it for features, but you can also use it, like say you found something dumb like a typo. Like, I mean, you could say on you know, slide 12 has a typo and then we can immediately fix that. Or like if there's an image that you don't think that needs to be improved, like you can absolutely put that in there. Um, we often like to say that we like, we think we're like just the right size. So we are not a one trick pony. We have both science and social studies. 
Um, but we're also not like a monster, monster, you know, publisher out there that just does every last thing in college and AP psychology and every last thing. So it's like, so we really are focused enough. So we've got a great engineering software team in Silicon Valley. Um, and so we can be very responsive and I'm, we're very proud of that. So please, please, please do, you know, use the product feedback. Um, and that again, is you just get to that by going to your name and then hitting help. Um, and then that'll send us the, the, any questions or feedback that you have that we can improve. All right, other questions that you guys have? I know, they've been asking great questions as you're going through and you've been hitting on all of them. I think the one, this was actually from earlier, just okay. before we wrap up today is just, can you highlight where the vocab cards are? Ah, okay, yes. So a couple pieces for vocab, yeah, I totally failed that. Um, when you are in the text with notes, um, the first page should always have the vocab right here. So in the text, we'll have vocab. And then there's a time that they'll practice it. There'll be like a little drag drop, drag drop activity in the fast track and the master. So there's always a vocab activity in the fast track and the master. And then it can also be in the notes of the notebook itself. Um, and then the last piece that Kelsey was pointing out was like that you have these vocab cards so on the bottom left side. Um, students have kind of practice cards um, for each of the vocab. Um, that they can use. And these are both in English and in Spanish. They can use the Spanish version up there as well, too. Awesome. And maybe right. really, I mean, our yeah. last, I mean, one, can you just, I know we've done this a couple times, maybe one more time, and this, we end on this, just back to that assignments page. Uh, okay. Really so I see Elaine's question. That. Okay. Yeah. Yes. So last question was it, uh, from Elaine, like about unusing assignments. So Elaine, like the key for assignments is that right now most of the students can see stuff in your subscription. So you may not necessarily need to use our assignments. You could probably just on Google Classroom or just email them and literally just say, go to lesson one and do the notes. But if you have things locked down, then that's when you really do need to use the assignments. So you go to assignments, hit create new, and then you choose what you wanna assign first. So do you wanna assign an assessment or do you wanna assign an investigation or do you wanna assign reading or do you wanna assign the lesson game? So you pick which piece. Um, and then you say which students it should go to, and then you pick your time that it goes there. Okay. Um, and then that, that's kind of the basics of assignments. And then we have other videos that you can also look at for like kind of the details of um, that assigning process to the students. And you could do the same thing for tests, right? And that's, that was Elaine's follow-up. Yes. The same process if you want to assign an assessment. Yeah, exact same assi process for ass assessment. So you choose lesson, and then in the assessments, it'll say, I want this copy of this assessment that I've created. Um, and so for assessments, it's just, I mean, this is not groundbreaking, but the assessments button over here on the left, um, will have the assessments. And then we have a default purple TCI test and you can also assign right from here. So once you've created a test in the assessments, or if you just want to use our default test in the assessments, um, then you go to assessments and you create that right here. Okay. There's a lot of cool features too with like the assessments. Like, I mean, you can literally edit anything to your heart's desire in the assessments. Um, so, you know, definitely let us know if you want us to follow up with assessments. It's like, it's kind of cool. You can share with other teachers, you can share within your district. Like they are, they are really useful, especially upper elementary, if you are doing kind of more detailed assessments, but you can also make like a one question, like, you know, like exit ticket type thing and like assign that as the assessment. It doesn't have to be a full fledged test that you're assigning. Totally. Yeah. We've got Kimberly right. in the chat saying she loves that, that feature. Right. So check cool, it out. Cool. All right, so we are down to the last couple of seconds here. So if you just want to throw in chat real quick, like um, it just what's the kind of one thing that you want to test out or the one thing you definitely want to try? So is it the notes, is it investigations, is it super simple science? Like just let us know kind of after seeing all those pieces, um, what you want to try out. Um, and then thank you guys very much. We will stay for a couple more minutes. Like if there's any other Q&A questions that you need to throw in there. Um, and then if we're, we'll at least email you um, answers to those to make sure that you get the answers for those. So thank you guys very, very much. I hope you have lots of success um, testing out investigations and testing out notes and things with students um, and hope they have a good time with it. All right, thank you guys. Have a great day.